What is a song? What is a piece of music? A song is a piece, but a piece isn't always a song. Operas have arias. Are they songs? In college, my music professors told me that a song must be sung. Okay, I said. What about Mendelssohn's songs without words? I was a smart ass that way. If a song must be sung, is Beethoven's Ninth Symphony a song or a piece? Hymns have words and they are sung. Are hymns songs? If so, are praise songs hymns? Whether we call it a song or a piece, well, it's always music. After all, that what's in a name? That which we call a song by any other name would still be music. So, call it a song, call it a piece, I simply do not care. Let's just make be beautiful music and leave it at that. So, there are many established structures for music. Most of these evolve over time, but there's usually a period of time when the structure remains relatively stable. For example, Haydn wrote 109 symphonies, and Mozart wrote 41 symphonies, all using the same structure. That's 150 symphonies, all using the same formula. There are, of course, thousands more that were written by lesser-known composers at the same time. Now, when Beethoven and Schubert came along, the symphony form began to change. And today, well, it's pretty rare to hear anything that's called a symphony. It's easy to see why composers would use established formulas. With a structure to work from, one has a better chance of creating a successful work and, of course, has the opportunity to work efficiently. Creating art around a formulaic structure has its ups and downs. On top of that, critics tend to look down on any artist who employs the use of a formula. Well, <laughs> I think it depends on what you do with it. After all, I don't hear any of the critics uh, chastising Haydn or Mozart for using that symphony formula every time. But then again, I also don't hear anyone complaining about Beethoven and Schubert evolving and expanding on the symphony form. Now, earlier this week, I put a call out to some of my musician friends to write me some four-bar melodies. I gave them some parameters so that hopefully the tunes would all be compatible with one another. So, hymns are really one of the simplest and most widely used musical formulas. A hymn text is written in a rhythmic pattern called a metric. The metric defines how many syllables there are in each line of the hymn text. So hymn tunes are also written with a metric pattern defined by how many notes there are in each line. A typical metric, for example, might be 7797. Seven, This indicates that there's seven syllables in lines 1, 2, and 4 and that there are nine syllables in the third line. So to create a hymn tune for such a text, a composer might choose to write in an A-A-B-A -A -A combination. This indicates that not only do the lines one, two, and four have the same metric, but they are also the same melody and that line three will be a contrasting melody to keep, keep everybody awake, hopefully. <laughs> so, let's take a look here. I got some really terrific uh, submissions. Uh, let's, let's do it this way. Um, I got 
four from Matthew Re Wheeler, and I was pleasantly surprised to get uh, some submissions from Matthew. Uh, Matthew is an extremely well, extremely talented uh, film score writer, and he's busy taking Hollywood by storm with his tremendous talent. So I was just thrilled that he sent me uh, four melodies in the parameters that I had asked for. And then uh, Scott Hatfield, uh, another local musician, uh, put together one. And a friend of mine from the church down in Selma, uh, Selma First Christian Church that I play at, he's one of the musicians there, and he submitted a melody. So I put kind of a structural parameters on this to make sure that the melodies would all be in the same key, uh, the range would be more or less the same, and that they would be four bars in 4-4 four, four time. Uh, that gives me the opportunity to kind of mix and match here uh, to see what we're going to do. Now, the only real preparation I did for any of this is I went through the tunes and I then put a kind of a functional harmonization on everything so that I could do uh, different things with it. Uh, I, on all six of these, I put a, a harmonization that you might find in a more modern uh, hymn tune, and uh, that way we can, uh, we can play around with these a little bit. So um, let's see if we can create an AABA -A hymn tune. And why don't we try out just the first two submissions from Matthew Wheeler, and we'll see where that gets us. So what will happen is A will be uh, number one here, and it'll be A, A, B, A. B will be number two. And you'll hear this is very much a very typical hymn tune construction. could put that in a hymn book and uh, find, I can probably find a text that already goes with it. Um, one of the handy things that most hymn books have uh, is a, what's called a metric index and it indicates the metric of the various tunes and the various texts. And that means that, of course, an, an editor can just simply mix and match, right? Well, hmm. Um, I have seen, and any musician who's played in a church has seen some really stunningly bad pairings on this. Um, there's, of course, the hymn tune that's based on Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And, the, you know, the melody is very uplifting and kind of grand and, you know, makes you feel good in spirit. And so to have a hymn text like, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, uh, certainly makes sense. But in most Catholic hymn books, <laughs> there's this really dreary text about God coming down from heaven with a sword and smiting the sinners and there's blood and gore and, and all of this stuff going on. And the editor paired that text with Beethoven's melody, and I'm like, what are you doing? That's awful. But anyway, you know, um, we could probably take any two of these and uh, create a hymn tune. Uh, it, it would actually, actually work. And you don't always have to use A, A, B, A. You could, you know, do something else. So why not? Okay, I need to go here. All right, so let's see here. Okay, so 
So let's take a look at something else. The pop song. Now, like hymns, most popular songs have component parts and that are assembled to create a finished product. And also like hymns, the components are variable and not all the components are used in every song. And sometimes there are additional components. The typical list of components are introduction, verse, the uh, chorus, the bridge, and the ending. So the introduction is usually an instrumental bit that you hear to get you started with the song. The verse is normally where the plot line of the song is uh, introduced, the story advances in the verses. The chorus is really the summation or main point of the song. And the bridge is usually a verse in terms of text or lyric, uh, but it has an alternate melody to keep interest in, and variation in the song. And then, of course, the typical thing that you usually hear is after the bridge, there's going to be a guitar solo, right? And they might use the, the verse or the intro music as the background or accompaniment for the big guitar solo. And then you'll get back to a, the chorus getting repeated a few times. Um, in older songs, you usually heard the fade out, you know, the chorus would go on and on and on and on and on and on and on, and then the song would slowly fade out. But most contemporary popular songs have an actual ending on them now. And again, this is just uh, the typical structure might be intro, verse, and then intro, verse again, uh, and then chorus, and then you'll do intro, verse, chorus, uh, then the bridge, uh, then the guitar solo, uh, then you might actually have another verse to do, uh, then uh, go into the repeated chorus at the end, or, you know, there's all kinds of variations. You also have songs that don't have all of those parts, like uh, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, um, which is just verse after verse after verse after verse after verse, with only like a little brief musical interlude in between. And then the only thing that resembles a bridge uh, is when we get to the part of the story when the ship sinks, then there's like a dramatic instrumental section and then there's the verses that sum it up. So, you know, musicians can do just about anything they want. So we're gonna take some of our melodies here and we'll mix uh, some uh, Scott Hatfields and Dave Highbaugh's in here. So what if we use what we haven't used yet and we'll make, okay, we'll take uh, Matthew's number four will be our intro. Uh, Matthew's number three will be our verse. We'll make Let's make Scott's the chorus, and we'll make Dave's the bridge. Now, of course, what we're looking at here is really just the structure of it. Um, I'll play these, you know, just put these together in that order, and uh, we'll see what we get. Mm -hmm. 